What's up everyone, back for another beer review, and today I will be reviewing a beer from The Alchemist, and they are out of Stowe, Vermont, and this is their heady topper. So this is a double IPA that comes in at 8% alcohol by volume. No IBUs listed in the time of review. I have no idea how old this beer is exactly, and that's because uh, they do not put um, dates on their cans, at least as far as I know. But this beer was given to me by a, a good friend of mine, Ewart, aka Teku Murray. So Thank you very much, uh, Ewart. I do appreciate it. Ewart and his buddy Derek came to Buffalo for the 2019 Shelton Brothers Festival, and both of them hooked me up with a beer. Ewart gave me Hetty Topper, and uh, Derek gave me a, an old Hickory Brewery beer, their uh, Photon Spear, which is this big barrel age pearl style with a bunch of adjuncts. Can't wait to get in that one. So thank you very much, uh, Ewart, for this one. Now, full disclosure, I've had this one before numerous times, uh, but it's been three or four years since I've had it. And for me, Hetty is, Hetty is like, the bridge between the old school and the new school. That's that's kind of how I think about it nowadays. It has enough of like the New England style influence, even though this is not a New England style beer. It has the you know the tropical fruits, the stone fruits, the sweeter uh, fruit components to it. But then it has some old school vibes to it, like you know, pine resin and a dankness and uh, you know some some pithy uh, citrus vibes and whatnot. So uh, I, I feel like this is the um, uh, old school meets new school type of. Um, IPA. Uh, they call it a Vermont IPA, basically. Uh, so it's not New England style, uh, but it is, you know, it, it just has some of the new school influence. Um, this is a beer, and this and Pliny, uh, Pliny the Elder from Russian River, I feel like these two beers, um, nowadays, if you get into craft beer, like over the last two or three years, you might not appreciate them as much as when they were first released back in the early 2000s. I think this one was first released in 2003. When you look at the, you know, the hops that were available, you know, 16, 17 years ago, and just like what was going on back then, these were like groundbreaking. These were groundbreaking beers, and they still hold up to this day. Now, they might not be as great as some of these newer New England style for certain people, for other people, this is where it's at. Forget all the New England style. For other people, they just love West Coast style. You know, everybody has different palettes and different enjoyments and whatnot. Uh, for me, I still love this beer. Well, at least last time I had it and uh, I've been wanting to review it just because for nostalgia sake, but also just because I want to review it and I haven't had it in so long. So yeah, anyway, they say drink from the can. Uh, they have a whole spiel here on the back, uh, uh, John Kimmich about, you know, drink from the can. Uh, they talk about like when you pour it in the glass. I remember seeing a video on YouTube on the Alchemist page, him talking about like when you pour it in the glass, um, you know, after 20, 30 minutes, it oxidizes, turns into different beer. So he likes drinking from the can where there's a layer of, um, um, you know, a layer of uh, CO2 that kind of protects it for a while. And you can come back to this beer an hour later and it's still very similar. Whatever the case may be, I like pouring it into glass. I'm going to, I'll leave some in the can and try it from the can before the end of the review. But yeah, anyway, let's crack it open. Uh, now, Ewart did say that his friend picked these up a couple weeks ago. So we're gonna say that the freshness on this is no older than a month old. So we should be fine. Let's give it a pour. So as you can see, it does have haze to it. I mean, it does have haze, no doubt, but it doesn't have, you know, the crazy milky, intense looking haze that a lot of these newer New England styles have, but it does have haze. It has this like bright sunshine, orange, yellow and orange color, uh, very vibrant. It's gonna probably come off dollar on camera, but so vibrant in the glass, about a finger of a off-white, um, fluffy, creamy colored looking head. They say don't pour it in a glass, but you know what, pour it in a glass, it looks beautiful. They used to talk about not pouring glass too, because you get all the sediment from uh, the hop and the yeast and all that stuff, and it would look, people would drink it, there's like, chunks in it. They're like, what is happening? doesn't hurt you, it's fine. Uh, but yeah, this this looks like a beautiful beer. This looks better than I remember it looking when I poured it out in a glass for the first time. Yeah, it just smells so clean and so so vibrant. Definitely big citrus components, like grapefruit pith, sweeter like OJ vibes. Um, there is like a tropical fruit, more like a pineapple and passion fruit. I'm getting in the nose, a little bit of peach. There's a nice dankness, omnipresent dankness to the entire um, aroma. It's like, a, it's just, it's blanketing in, in dankness. It's the predominant note, but it never steps in the way of those citrus and tropical and stone fruits. Uh, there's a touch of pine resin too I'm picking up on. A little bit of a multi component, like a, I won't even try to say nondescript maltiness. It just has a little sweeter, like malt kiss there. Man, it just, it smells so integrated, so cohesive, so well blended. Just, it's... It, it just smells awesome. It does. And is it the best smelling beer I've had lately? No. Is it the best smelling beer I've had ever? No. But it just smells like a good old drinking double IP. That's what it smells like. It's very inviting to my palate and I want to get into it. So cheers, everybody. And thanks again, York. Your... 
such a fucking good beer. It's just good. It's actually great. I just don't, I, I don't say the whole, it's uh, old school meets new school just to say it. When you taste this beer, at least for me, I get I get old school West Coast IPA vibes. I get West Coast, or I get uh, old school American IPA vibes, but then I get the new school, you know, like New England IPA vibes. Such such cool beer. We'll get in that in a second. First, body on this one. Medium to higher side of medium body. Really nice body. It's not too big. It's not thin. It's pretty much appropriate and perfect for me. Uh, the mouthfeel. There is carbonation here, and you know it, it's carbonated, but it still has a soft smoothness to it. Not necessarily creamy, but really nice, soft, and smooth. It's just, it's a great body and mouthfeel, too. Yeah, such, you know what, spot on body and mouthfeel. I can't really say much bad about this one um, when it comes to the body and mouthfeel. Taste, though, right up front, all those sweet, you know, fruits I was talking about. It has more of like a sweeter OJ. It has... Uh, definitely peach, apricot, stone fruits, pineapple. Big pineapple for me on this one as well. That's right up front. I'm mixing it with the multi sweetness. As soon as it hits mid palate, though, the blast of like that zesty citrus pith, or grapefruit pith, a little bit of like a lemony lemon zest type of thing hits right mid palate, so it stops the sweetness. Here comes that that, that pithiness from the citrus, and then as it carries on through the back of the palate, the pine resin kicks in for me there's a there's a nice pine resin and there's like i said an omnipresent like herbaceous dankness to this entire beer for me as well which is really nice it's nuanced subtled it's accentuating the rest of the beer as it is but that pine resin thing kind of carries to the back of the palate and this finishes moderately bitter uh, moderately bitter for me it's not too bitter it's not like an old school west coast ipa where you just crush it's palate crushing and it's not like a new England style ipa where there's basically a low bitterness if any bitterness at all it's kind of right in between Finishes semi-dry, a little bit of a residual sweetness, but between that pine bitter, bitterness and the bitterness in general, and a little bit of dryness, it breaks up the, the, the sweetness to almost a perfect level. Um, has a great balance between the bitterness, dryness, and sweetness, at least for my palate. As you can see, I'm taking this down. I could drink a shit ton of this. And I, you know, I wish, I, would, I don't think this beer is hard to get anymore. Like if you go to Stowe, you can definitely get, I want to say of Four pack of this is $12, maybe 14 bucks. Correct me if I'm wrong, anybody out there who's been there recently. I think they're like $12.99 a four pack. For a 12, for a double IPA at 8% of this quality, $12.99 might be the best value in craft beer aside from maybe like Lagunitas. This is just, yeah, it's quality, quality, and quality. Um, yeah, I'm done gushing about it. Is this my favorite beer from The Alchemist? I think I like Focal Banger more. Focal Banger, uh, I had more recently than Hetty, and I thought that beer did it for me a little bit more. That's more of like a five out of five. This used to be a five out of five for me, and it's still very close. I've had better beers over the past, you know, three or four years since I've had it, but this still, this is this is the thing I can say about this beer. For me, it still holds up. Whether this was, you know, the first time it's brewed, like I said, I think it was 2003. Every time I've had this, I've been impressed by it. It's been very similar every time. I'm sure there has been different batch variations and so on and so forth. But for me, every time I've had it, it's been very similar and it's just been fucking delicious. So at the end of the day, I am going to give Hetty Topper from The Alchemist a high 4.75 out of 5. I'm going to go 4.8 out of 5. It's, uh, it's just not a 5 out of 5 level beer for me anymore, but it's damn close. And if you've never had Hetty and you've been into craft beer for X amount of years, you owe it to yourself to try this because this is this and Pliny, I think, are the two like older school IPAs that I think everyone should try. And I think there's going to be a lot, and I know, not I think, I know there's going to be a lot of people who drink this one, like I said, two or three years into craft beer and be like, yeah, it's just solid, it's good or whatever. And that's, it, listen, that's fair. Everybody's palate's everybody, everybody's palate. But, um, you know, you have to take into context how long ago these uh, recipes were created and how long ago this was first brewed. And for a beer that's recipe is like 16 years old, even if they've made some tweaks over the year, it's still impressive. It's really impressive to me. And yeah, Hetty Topper is great. So Hetty Topper, The Alchemist, 4.8 out of 5, delicious beer. If you've had this one before, let me know what you think about it. I'm sure a lot of you have. Uh, price and availability, like I said, I think it's $12.99 a four pack at the brew. 
I think this gets uh, distribution into Vermont. Uh, we've had this show up here in the West New York area where you have to go actually to uh, the bottle shops that shows up and, and drink it um, on premise. You can't you can can't buy it and bring it off. So you, I do see these occasionally in Western New York. I was actually thinking about going to a local bottle shop and reviewing this and usually Focal Banger shows up as well and review both of those at the location I go to. Maybe I'll still do that if Focal Banger or another one of their beer shows up. It's been a while since I've seen them. Uh, and availability, like I said, it's just, it's, yeah. Pretty much brewery only, but it trickles out here and there. And this isn't, I don't think, is hard to trade for anymore. So if if somebody has some of these, you should be able to get them. Not relatively easy, but like, you know, it's, it's not some crazy well. Uh, you should still be able to get your hands on it if you really want to. So once again, Hetty Topper, The Alchemist, 4.8 out of 5. I apologize for the long review, but this, this is a beer that I think, you know, a 12, 13, 14 minute review is probably proper. So yeah, thanks again, Ewart. I do appreciate it, man. I'm finally... I'm glad that I finally got a chance to review this on camera because uh, it's a damn delicious beer. And I'm gonna review. I'm gonna drink the rest of this off off camera and enjoy every second of it. So thanks again, Ewart. Thanks to everybody. Till the next one. Cheers. Oh yeah, eight percent. Eight percent. This drinks like it's fucking six six and a half. The intensity of flavor flavors eight percent. The alcohol like six percent. It's crazy. Anyway, cheers. <laughs>